because I'm currently enrolled in film production in university and a minor in marketing. So my major is film. And I've come to realize that I like really hate it. <laughs> I really hate it. They all look like they don't know what they're doing. And I'm just like, oh my God, I have no idea what we're doing. It's hard for me to focus and take school seriously. So like when he says like, what are your thoughts on this? I'm like, I don't have any thoughts. School makes me feel stupid. I don't know what to do. I'm a terrible student. I have dropped out of school for the time being. I'm not currently enrolled in school. I've been in school for the past five years of my life, so. So that's changed. I quit my job. I am 100% self-employed. It's a very strange feeling to know that I'm waking up to live for me. Education is something that needs to be reconsidered if you feel like it's not for you. I started off with Bachelor of Fine Arts. I did a couple things and I realized that no matter how many times I switched my major, I hated what I was doing because it wasn't about the major, it was about me just hating school. Like it really came down to why am I in school? And the reasons that I came up with all led back to satisfying my parents and to me that wasn't enough. Okay, I can choose my happiness or I can make them proud. But if I make them proud, I'm going to be miserable, I'm gonna have anxiety, I'm gonna get bad grades, and I'm just like gonna hate my life. Like I would literally, could not even sleep because I was so stressed. I cannot stand school, which is funny because I'm actually considering going back. Time flies. It's been years since I last stepped foot in a university classroom. That's actually mind blowing. Wow, time flies. Cheers to that. In case you're curious, today we're sipping on an iced chai latte with oat milk. Light ice, so they don't skimp out on me. Welcome back. If you're new, my name is Ashley. I make so many different types of videos. I do spiritual content mostly, but I also like to do deep talks, talking about life in your 20s. Just whatever's on my mind is on my channel, really. And what's on my mind today? school. So today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of life after dropping out of school to be a full-time influencer, which sounds crazy, I know. Imagine what my parents thought when I told them. That was not a fun conversation. If you want to hear more about that, I do have a video that I made around the time I actually left school. I'll link it below and you can hear the ins and outs of the whole entire backstory of how I made the decision, what my parents thought, what it was like. I also want to remind you guys, this is not like a generalist. This is personal to me, so this is how I feel about dropping out two years later. Obviously, everyone is different and everyone's situation is different, but this is just like my own personal feelings on my decision. Anyways, let's talk. I have the pros and cons list on my phone, which is at 3%. Ugh, why do I do this every single time? Okay, I think we should get the bad out of the way and then move on to the good. So let's start with the cons, okay. So the cons include <laughs> regret question mark you don't know how you're supposed to feel after making such a big decision part of you was like do i regret this do i not yeah. like you feel like you're supposed to regret it because everyone tells you that it's a bad decision so because of that it's like you feel the projection of other people's feelings and you kind of take it on sorry i did that anyways maybe you didn't do that but it's like you get so much in your head because everyone's telling you this one thing about your decision and that's a stupid one. So you feel like you're supposed to regret it. So you just like regret it, but like, do you really? How I felt is I stood by my decision for so long and then every time things get hard for me, I start to think, hmm, what if I didn't drop out of school? <laughs> and that's the next con, the what ifs. The what ifs that are associated with this decision are very heavy because you're never gonna know so there's no point in going there, but we are human and it's probably gonna happen. What if I didn't drop out of school when I did? What if I didn't quit my job? What would I be doing if I hadn't made the decision? Would I have a nine to five job right now? Would I be super rich? Would I have bought a house by now? What if I did? It's just like, what if, what if, what if, what if? Like all these scenarios that are gonna play out in your head are going to drive you crazy if you give them weight. Don't, don't, don't allow them to sit heavy with you because honestly, it's not worth it because why? You can't change your decision, you can't. There's nothing that you can do except go back to school to change your decision. But even then, like the years in between, you can't take those back, you can't change that. So either make a choice to go back or keep living unapologetically, but the what ifs are not healthy. They're gonna happen though, and I'm warning you, if you make the choice to drop out of school, yes, you're gonna think, what if I hadn't dropped out of school a year later? Especially if things get harder, if you decide to become an entrepreneur, or if you're working a job and you, you haven't gotten a promotion, you're like, 
what if I just got my diploma? Like, would I have my promotion by now? Oh, I always like to clarify to people, I do have a diploma. So I did go to college for business management. Um, I graduated in 2015 and then I went to university and that's what I dropped out of after about two years of film production in York University. So yeah, if you're curious, that's my story in 10 seconds. Speaking of curiosity, the curiosity that comes with this decision is intense. You're curious about what you've been missing out on. And this is different from the what ifs because it's like, you just don't know what you're missing out on. Okay, the next con is a very obvious one, which is finding a job and not being able to put something like this on your resume. It gets hard. I had not searched for a job for the past couple of years up until recently and I'm looking at all these jobs and all of them require like a bachelor's degree, which automatically rules me out of this like application, which is really unfortunate because you know what? Had I stayed in school, I probably would have gotten bad grades. I would have just gotten by and, w and I would have gotten my um, degree because I hated it, right? Over the years, I feel like I've learned so much about the field of work that I want to get into. Um, stuff that I probably wouldn't have learned in school because my mind wasn't fully ready to learn in that environment. So I feel more qualified with the years of experience that I have had working in social media, like as a freelance and um, as an entrepreneur, rather than how qualified I would have been if I had stayed in school. And it's unfortunate that that piece of paper like tells people how smart you are. And it's, it's not fair. I don't think it's fair. But that's the reality. I do think it's possible to get a job without it, but I will say like 60% of the jobs, um, that's a requirement. And I still apply to some of them, but you know, if they say it's a requirement most times, it's because they actually do want that. So yeah, of course, that is the biggest con that when you want to find a job, it's like you got to work 10 times harder. And as a black woman, I got to work 15 times harder. You know what I mean? So that piece of paper does prove a lot to some people. And when you don't have it, you're gonna feel it. Another con is someone like me, I was in a program called film production and I could have networked a lot in that program. So if you drop out, keep in mind that you are kind of robbing yourself of certain opportunities. Mind you, the opportunities are still available to you. You just gotta work a lot harder to put yourself in the right rooms to get there. When you're in university or college, you're put in a lot of the right rooms, you're put in a lot of workshops, you have lots of mentors come in, you're networking with fellow creative students that are in your classes, who, who knows, they might be the biggest director of the world in 10 years, and you say that you went to college with them, you built the connection when you were young, and now you're getting an easy job 10 years later on the set of a major film production you know what I mean things like that I just look back and I'm like a lot of the things that I do could really benefit from having made those connections in school um, with people that might be into producing films screenwriting um, lighting photographers set designers things like that I could use those people for some of the projects that I want to create but I wasn't able to make those connections in the program because I dropped out. So I'm like, shit, huh? I would probably have a great roster of creatives on my cell phone had I stayed in school, but instead I had to go out and network in the real world, which I do, but it took me a while to be able to do that because I was so shy. When you're in school, you're forced into those rooms. You know what I mean? So if networking is something that's very important to your career, then I mean, I mean, being in school might not be a bad thing, you know? When you're dropping out of school, you are missing out on a lot of networking with students, mentors, workshops, whatever, you name it, you're missing out, that's for sure. Okay, another one is like, this is like a personal one to me that you guys might feel like, letting my family down was one of the biggest cons that, out of everything. It sucked. It really sucked because I just wanted to make them proud, but I knew that me finishing school at that point in my life was completely messing up my mental health, making me miserable. I had so much anxiety. I wasn't like fully in it. I was not doing well in my classes, honestly. So it's like, I just felt like, okay, I can choose my happiness or I can make them proud. But if I make them proud, I'm going to be miserable. I'm gonna have anxiety, I'm gonna get bad grades. And I'm just like gonna hate my life. Like I would literally, could not even sleep because I was so stressed. I cannot stand school, which is funny because I'm actually considering going back. That's a whole other video, but um, I can't stand it. Maybe in this point in my life, it might be easier for me, but at that point it wasn't. I was literally on two different medications. I was on an anxiety and depression medication and then I was also on an ADHD medication and that really fucked me up. It was just a really tough time for me. I was also on therapy at the school. They provided free therapy sessions. So 
I don't know, man. It was just really hard for me. So I had to make the choice for myself, but that meant letting them down. And that was really tough. That was really tough. And because of that decision that I made, I actually ended up having to leave the house and go like start a life of my own. And that's what made me move out at 24 was um, making the choice to drop out of school. My parents pretty much like gave me an ultimatum, which is okay. I made the choice myself, but um, yeah, I ended up moving out. So. That was like a really tough time for me. It was a really tough time. And um, until the last con, <laughs> the biggest, well not the biggest, but the, one of the biggest ones is that uh, you look back at, depending on what your situation is, the trajectory of your life and like how things could be different. I guess it's kind of like the what ifs, but for me it was like, I could have bought a house by now had I stayed in school. I could have because I was living with my parents, I was saving money, I was working, I was in school, probably could have gotten a better job, gotten paid more. Like I was on the road to buy a house within a year and a half because of the money I was making at the time. But because I had to leave the house, I had rent to pay, which took so much out of my savings, you know? So that was a con for me is that I'm like, damn, I could have bought a house in like 2018. Oh man, that sucks, doesn't it? No, not 2018. 2019, 2019, I probably could have by the end of the year. I really believe that I could have because I was making a lot, I was saving a lot, and I wasn't spending a lot. And yeah, shit changed pretty fast when you move out. <laughs> it changes. Okay, onto a more positive note. More positive note. The cons of dropping out of school. Okay, number one, I got to write my book. I got to write my book. So obviously this is personal to me, but there might be some passion projects that you're working on that because you're in school you don't have the time to work on them or pursue it and when you drop out guess what you got you got all the time in the world well i did because i am self-employed so when i dropped out all my time was mine um i quit my job a week after i dropped out of school so literally all of my time was mine and i was able to write my book hopefully my first of many and because of that i got it published and it was Sorry, there's people in the hallway um, putting major retailers. If you're interested in buying my book, it's actually available at Barnes & Nobles, Target, Indigo, anywhere you can buy books, you can find my book. It's called Mindfulness Through the Stars by Ashley Flores. I wrote it in my time off of school. Right after I dropped out, I dedicated so much time to writing that book and I got it done pretty quickly. So that was a beautiful moment for me. And that's one of the main reasons why I don't regret dropping out because if I didn't drop out, I would not have been able to write that book because I was so stressed. Any second that I wasn't spending on schoolwork or pretending to spend on schoolwork, I was just guilty for not doing anything school related. Even if that meant just sitting in front of my laptop with my essay like page open, just staring at it, that like that was studying, you know? So yeah. That was a really, really beautiful thing for me to do. Another pro is something that, yes, it made my life harder, but it made me into the woman that I am today. And I'm forever grateful that I did this. Moving out, that was something that I did only because I dropped out of school. Like I said, it was like kind of like an ultimatum. So because I made the choice to move out, my life changed, man. Like everything changed. I do not know who or where I would be today if I stayed at my parents' house. My mental health was deteriorating by the second. It had nothing to do with my parents. My parents are amazing. It was never like a toxic, toxic environment, but I felt like I couldn't really grow because I did have a lot of rules. Um, I was in a very strict household, so I just didn't feel like I had like creative expression. I, I couldn't do the things I wanted to do or network the way that I wanted to because I had to be home early. I, I didn't have freedom. And when I moved out, I realized that I was actually quite spoiled. <laughs> And it humbled me, it humbled me. I grew up, I grew up, I became a woman, you know? And I just learned how to navigate through life as an adult, which I don't know how long that would have taken me had I not done that. Mind you, my parents are great parents. Like my sister just moved out like a couple months ago and she's 29 and she is a fully functioning, self-sufficient adult. Like she's a great person, whatever. Like nothing to do with my parents. But I think that I was just so I don't know, I was the baby of the family, so you know, it was a different type of upbringing, I guess, for me. And I just feel like moving out and having to figure everything out on my own, like I grew up. Sometimes, <laughs> don't tell my sister this, I hope she never sees this, but sometimes I feel like we're so different in so many ways and she's so mature and so much more mature than me in so many ways. But in other ways, I just think like, man, like I feel like you need a year living on your own and struggling a bit to really like, really bring you to earth because I feel like going through that just like humbled me and made me strong and made me like more of a fighter and made me, I don't know, I just, 
I feel like I can take on like anything now, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, so yeah, I mean, put me in a hostel in, in fucking Bangkok and I, I'll be fine. I'll adapt, you know? I learned how to adapt before I was so stuck in my ways and my upbringing and my privilege. And now I just feel like I'm chilling. I can, I can adapt to most environments except camping. I won't camp. <laughs> I will not do that. I don't want to adapt to camping. <laughs> Is it Bangkok or Bang Bangkok? I don't know how to say it. Another pro is that I was able to spend time focusing on the relationship that I was in at the time. And I think that if I had stayed living with my parents, I might still be with that person today. But because I moved out and I experienced life and I don't know, just like the way everything played out, I truly think that like, you know, living on your own forces you to spend more time with the person. Um, when you spend more time with the person, you start to see them who they are. I don't know. I just feel like if I was still at my parents' house, I'd probably still be with him. And I think that breakup was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, no disrespect to him. I just, it wasn't healthy, you know? So it was about one of the best things that could happen to me. And it's not the best thing that happened to me, but you know? And um, I think that that probably happened because I lived on my own, you know, spent more time intimately, like one-on-one. -on -one together at my place at his place i could sleep over I, was, I wasn't able to sleep over when i was like with my mom and dad so um i learned how he lived he learned how i lived and like the incompatibilities just you know made themselves clear a lot faster than they probably would have had i stayed at my parents house so yeah i was able to focus on that relationship a little too much but that really helped um help me become the woman that i am and see the relationship for what it was and See that it wasn't good for me so yeah and lastly dropping out of school helped me realize what it is i actually want to do in life you are way too young when you're told to make a decision on what you want to do for the rest of your life why the fuck why the fu who whose idea was it to say huh 17 that's a good age to choose what program you want to take that's going to determine the rest of your life like who what what the fuck was up with the people deciding that i want to know that why 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 like honestly i would rather elementary school go until 16 years old and then high school go until 22 and then you decide where you want to go to school because what the hell but then again that's a lot of school i don't know i just think that being 17 and making that choice is insane and i had no idea what i wanted to do so i just ended up okay cool business management okay cool you know marketing okay cool let me switch over to this like i just didn't know i didn't know what i wanted so i just kept choosing random things and film production was cool but it wasn't for me i don't know man i just feel i just feel like i was able to take the time to decide what i want whether that be being an entrepreneur e-commerce you know, YouTube channel, social media management, digital influencer, whatever it is, like I've made that choice for me. And I have many things I wanna do. And I, I have kind of like focused on one thing, which I'll talk about one day, but you know, I just think that with the time that I had, I was able to figure it out. I was able to try and fail multiple things and end up figuring out what I want. And I think that if I was in school, I'd probably, be like i don't know let me let me think so i would have graduated in 2021 probably or 2020 i don't really know and then i probably would have ended up becoming like a pa going on set as an assistant and then maybe just like just on set doing random things probably would have hated it i don't know i don't know my friend actually um did it and she ended up like hating it eventually and changing Careers. I'm pretty sure she's about to. I'm not gonna say her name obviously, but yeah. So <laughs> that was a little reassuring to me. I won't lie. I was like, okay, maybe I made the right choice. Um, I, I know I made the right choice, but sometimes you get in your head. So yeah, I don't think I'd want to be working like a nine to five on set, just like every day being someone's bitch until I wasn't, you know? Cause that's where everybody starts and I don't think I want to do that. So yeah. Okay, so that is my pros and cons list on how I feel about dropping out of school two years later. I can't believe it's been two years. If you have any questions for me on the process, on whatever, ask me down below. If I can make this decision easier for you in any way, I want to do that because <laughs> let me tell you, making the choice was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life and 
a like I just I can't even imagine the stress you're under if you're going through a similar thought process So if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me anyways Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video or you learned something from it and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys